cloud and I'm going to start immediately sharing my screen. Welcome to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It is the 10th of September. A reminder that we follow the Jenkins Code of Conduct. So thanks very much for being here. Let's review the action, the uh, agenda items. Action items. Then we'll talk about adopt OpenJDK 8 for Docker on Debian, a retirement schedule for Debian 9 in our Docker images, removing install plugins.sh. Uh, I'll give a brief status on PowerPC 64 and status on conversations with Oracle Cloud. So Alex, anything else? No, I think that's a good list. Great, okay, so let's go over the action items. I still have to do that, Jeff. It will be at least another week before I work on it with Olivier unavailable infrastructure has kept me hopping busy. Um, we've got the Docker build rework PR. Alex, anything, you've been much closer to that than I have. I apologize that I haven't been as involved as I should. What, anything you want to report there? So it's actually, it's been merged now. So that action item is good. Oh, excellent. Okay. There are some follow on tasks that we, um, um, the, the PR itself has been merged. Excellent. Thank you. And has it, ha has it shown the desired positive effect on Docker build time on any of those things has, I haven't heard any outraged complaints or crying about the change that that surprises me and impresses me says that it must be a net positive. Well, it, it actually needs one change to the Jenkins file for it to actually be for, um, fully. Ah. So I need to make up. That's one of the tasks that needs to be done. I need to go ahead and update the Jenkins file. So um, I'll, I'll be working on that uh, pull request for that. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, CentOS options for adopt open JDK. So anything to report there, Alex? Yeah, so I found um, they have a, a, a page, um, adopt open JDK does, um, has a page with all the different install options. Um, uh, so I'll look at some PRs um, for adding that to the um, CentOS or other images because um, there are, you know, it was only CentOS that we need to do that on. So I, yeah, I'll, I'll do that on CentOS and do some local testing. Okay. All right. Yeah, that one, that one I'm still, I'm still sort of wrestling. I, using Adopt Open JDK has the benefit that then we would be using only one JDK. The CentOS people are usually very closely coupled to Red Hat, who has their own JDK distribution that they're quite serious about. Mm. Interesting. Okay, good. Thank you. And then install plugins.sh. Um, I'm working on that PR right now. It's it's a pretty simple PR. Um, I should have it submitted today. And so tell, tell us more about what will that mean? There will be a message when install plugins.sh is run or? Correct. So we had done that with plugins.sh, which was an older method for installing plugins. Um, and actually as part of my PR, I'm just going to delete that, the old plugins.sh because it's been deprecated for some time now. Um, so I'm kind of moving the warning that was in that about deprecation over to install plugins.sh. Um, and updating the message to point to the new method. And I think I saw that plugin manager is is being called now in the build process. Is that the plugin installation manager is already being can called? Be. It oh, can, can be. be. Option. Yeah. Okay. The, there's a, a wrapper script that the jar file is included now um, in the image, and um, the there's a shell script that wraps the um, jar file so you don't have to do the java jar dash jar invocation and that was tim tim jacob that um added that all right so okay oh and i still have a a blog post to do uh, to associate with that 
That's, and I've been talking with uh, the update center changes have been, uh, let's see, update center, uh, mirrors, and plugin installation manager. We've had really some significant improvements recently. The update centers are now, or, or I should say it differently, the, the mirrors are now using HTTPS instead of HTTP. The update center is, has gained a, a, a bunch of new, new intelligence thanks to Daniel Beck's work and then plugin installation manager. So good infrastructure blog post. So still to do. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you on install plugins.sh. Anything else you wanted to note there? No, no, that's all good. Okay, great. All right, adopt OpenJDK 8 for Docker on Debian. We, we do have a PR in place uh, for Buster. Um, we need to determine um, if we want to do that for Stretch. Buster is the newer, is 10, right? And Stretch yeah. is nine. Correct. Uh, I propose that we decide right now, intentionally not uh, doing a PR for Stretch. Okay. Stretch end of life. I, I saw a posting actually Stretch official end of life has already happened in that they've switched to LTS support mode. And mm -hmm. so, so it was back in July when it ended the normal support mode and went into LTS mode. And so, but the LTS mode still means we get security fixes, so we're okay. But I think once they release Bullseye in sometime in 2021, Stretch is should be off our list. Okay. Which brings us to our next topic: retirement schedule for Debian nine in our Docker images. Now, to educate me on this one, Alex, how how do we? What's an effective way to announce the retirement of an image? So we advise people to switch to the Buster image. That I'm not sure. I don't know if, if there's a, a, if we just add something to the repository on Docker Hub or, or what, I don't know what other um, projects do. So maybe we need to do some research to determine um, best practices. Okay, good idea. Yes, to see how other projects notify their consumers of obsolescence. I mean, I guess I, as I think about it, <clears throat> the the Open JDK people, for instance, don't notify at all. They stop supporting Alpine, and I got no no indication of the stop. It just didn't didn't iterate any longer. So mm -hmm. that's that's one possibility is just stop. <laughs> yeah, I, I suspect that's not not the popular possibility. So <laughs> we won't we we won't get a lot of love from our, from our consumers from our users. Okay, good. All right, how about let's give me the action item to uh, propose a, a, a retirement plan, including a communication plan. Because that fits nicely with the, uh, fits with the JEP responsibility. And may get me started on that JEP sooner, just by, by saying, hey, we need to do this retiring Debian 9 because the operating system itself will retire. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anything else on Debian uh, 9? Debian, let's use the code. Here. No, I don't think so. Okay. Then install-plugins.sh, I think we discussed in the action item. Anything else there? No, I think we, we discussed it well. Okay, hey, PowerPC LE, 64 LE um, agent access. So about a week ago, um, during things where I was busy with other stuff, uh, the lost, I lost access to the PowerPC agent I'd been using uh, that IBM had donated. Uh, I 
was in the middle of something and didn't have time to even ask for their help to get it restarted. I sent that request last night and Rafael responded immediately. Dark of the night for him in Brazil, he responded that he would look at it today. Um, it's been available, unavailable for a longer time on ci.jenkins.io because I couldn't figure out how to get it to connect. Once they provide it again, I'll reconnect it to my test cluster and to ci.jenkins.io and we'll watch to see how it behaves. Okay. Then we've also started conversations with Oracle Cloud. Um, Tyler Croy was involved in a conversation with uh, Corey Quinn and that conversation was around Oracle Cloud and how Oracle Cloud is evolving and Oracle uh, contacted us and as a, said, hey, they would like to be involved more with the Jenkins project. And so we, we were discussing with them possible things, including um, hardware contribution. So hardware slash uh, compute resource. Uh, and uh, bandwidth for mirroring. Nice. Yeah, it's and it's as a matter of course, we have to be sure that we're ready to use compute capacity that's available to us and may have to switch from one cloud to another, depending on who's willing to donate. So this, this makes for an interesting discussion. The conversations will continue and I'll, I'll keep sharing status. Do, is there a good um, page that goes over there, what they support? Um, um, just like, do they have something similar to like AC or ACI for instance? or things like that, you know? Yes, and, and, and good good point. Yes, they have a managed Kubernetes offering. Yes, they are just bringing online now a solution like ACI. Okay. So so they, they don't, I think, I like the way Tyler was discussing it with them initially. He noted, hey, when Microsoft brought their ACI solution online, we were one of the early adopters and we help them understand and refine their offering. Uh, mm -hmm. Oracle is in sort of an early adopter phase right now with their, their container instance style solution. Gotcha. And uh, they also, they have a different, one of the interesting angles is they have a different focus from their history, right? And I liked how they described it. They note that Google and Amazon both had to do massive compute projects for their business needs. And they did these scale wide business need uh, challenges. And then they began selling those to the market. Oracle needs to be able to sell, you know, database kind of products and enterprise things. And so they started from an enterprise style view. And so it gives them a different, different approach. And because they're a relatively newer entry, they have a lower price point as well. So uh, now we, we aren't, I don't think the Jenkins project is interested in paying cash to Oracle. That's, that's not yeah. really for me on the table at all because cloud continuous delivery foundation funds our, our budget to Azure and we need to get be sure we get volunteers and donors. Right. All right. That covered all the topics we had for our agenda. Anything else for today? Uh, nothing for me. All right. Well, Alex, thanks very much. A, an archive of the recording will be posted. And onward we go with the action items. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you.